That's wizard, Annie. <laughs> We're bringing it back. Uh, we are. No, it would have had to have been a thing in the first place. Okay, so Star Wars Episode One, <laughs> the beginning of George Lucas's massive campaign of anticipation. The huge amount of... I kind of like Anticipointment. That's not bad. Well, you can blame CGP Grey for that one. Because That's fair. He, he, he said uh, it was actually during his copyright uh, copyright thing, uh, which, by the way, is an awesome video. Uh, check that out. I probably have a link to it somewhere in the video. Um, we'll probably watch it at a, at a later date. But Anticipointment uh, was something that was wrought upon civilization by George Lucas with his uh, sad attempts at uh, may, his sad attempts at B at B grade Star Wars movies. Uh, yeah, that which is turned, even which turned out to which turned out to be actually D grade, actually potential F grade. Uh, I mean, that's D grade is pretty generous here. Yeah, so we're we're being nice by by saying these things. Uh, but don't mm. get me wrong, don't get me wrong. George Lucas, good a creative mind when it comes to certain things, but when it comes to writing dialogue. And, and overuse of CGI. Typical baby boomer. Take something good and then drink. Ouch. Wow. Wow. Yeah, just Hold bash ice. a whole generation there, why don't you? Uh, they should have done a better job of raising us, that's all I'm saying. How? Okay, wow. Okay, let's do so, the video before we get murdered. Yeah. Before the whole baby boomer army just comes out of nowhere and just I don't know how to use YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> this is not their demographic. Damn! Oh, shots fired. Man, wow. now. Wow. Wow. I did not think you could make that worse. I did not. I did not. Wars, episode one, the baby boomer menace, part one. Uh, to be fairly, okay, so this is okay. So this is Cinema Sins. Cinema Sins, everything wrong with Star Wars episode one, the Ooh. Phantom Menace, part one. They had to split this in two because they had a copyright strike at the time because YouTube is bullshit. Yeah, I mean both parts are thirteen and a half, fourteen minutes. Did you see the Phantom Menace? I mean, well, merit, unfortunately. So we're going to start these out, <laughs> and uh, and we're going to try and stomach these. So here we go. All right. Now this is a hard race. <laughs> uh, Man, I cannot wait to find out what happened to Luke Han and Leia after the Return of the Je Episode One. Episode One? Does that mean this story's going backwards, literally and figuratively? Also, reading. Also, I didn't read any of that, <laughs> let alone comprehend it. A New Hope's first scene: Battle of Vader overtaking Leia's ship. Empire's first scene, Hoth Battle. Return of the Jedi's first scene, Tatooine Rescue. But this movie's first scene, Political Ambassadors part of an envoy to talk about trade blockades. Funny, since blockade. the days of episode four, which is technically after this movie's events, how much extra technology this era has over its successor. Right. This way, please. When our high-ranking political guests have to walk at the slow-ass pace of a droid like this, maybe we've taken the robot workers concept too far. I have a bad feeling about this. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> so Liam Neeson isn't killing anyone in this suit. Also, god damn it, this stupid ass rat tail. Yes. I thought Barry's ponytails were for either preventing hair from getting in the way or to be cool. This is neither. Discuss. <laughs> be mindful of the living force, young Padawan. The ambassadors are Jedi Knights, I believe. Why would the Chancellor send obvious Jedi to the Trade Federation when it's pretty obvious they would never agree to enter the same room with them? Sending Jedi to something like this is almost like declaring war. At least make them not dress like Jedi so it can be a surprise. Kill them immediately. Fair enough. As you wish. Because killing Jedi is easy. We're on it, boss. Can you send gas to just one room when you feed it into the air conditioning system? Or was this room created by Spectre to execute people you don't like on a whim? Uh. They must be dead by now. Destroy what's left of them. Not only does this asshole not wait long enough for the Jedi to be dead, but he also thinks dead Jedi need further destruction. These motherfuckers had these Jedi in here all alone, yeah. with pretty much nowhere to go. The room is filled with gas. Yeah. They have no reason to open this door at all. Even if you think they might lightsaber their way through the door, why not just have your droids waiting to gun them down as they did that? Check it out, Corporal. We'll cover you. Robot soldiers have corporals? Here's your action in a nutshell. Jedi mowing down mindless minions, making a mockery of middling mechanisms. Or you yeah. going on combat? Yep. We lost each mission, sir. You might be expecting me to send these characters obviously racist accents. And fine, I will. But I'm more <laughs> yeah. interested in seeing how an advanced ship like this could possibly lose all transmission from the affected area. You don't have a backup camera or hallway gear? Why not just yeah. do that for the whole army? What did this exactly do anyway? Are they dead? Unconscious? Are we about to see them reboot like all Terminators do? All this nah. destruction and there isn't any smoke, scratch marks, burns, or anything marking a battle took place other than some ruined droids. If you want to know why subconsciously you were hating this movie, it's little details like that. Ooh, Did yes. someone open a dusty chest and where the spare droid was just lying around? Details. Fly, my pretty, fly! <laughs> they are still coming through! This is impossible! So this guy doesn't understand what impossible there. More Jedi. 
Master, destroy us! This movie suddenly becomes like a video game where the bad guys send new enemies for the hero to fight, but just two of them so the game doesn't get too challenging too really fast. Like Are they watching this footage in the door that was nearly melted yeah. by Qui-Gon just a second ago? They've gone up the ventilation shaft. Quick, shoot some gas in there! I see they applied Natalie Portman's board makeup. Oh wait, that's not makeup? A communications disruption can mean only one thing. Invasion. What? Do you not know about that's asteroids strange. and other space anomalies? Ooh. Are communications always perfect Ooh. for you assholes? The Senate would revoke that trade franchise, and they'd be finished. You're still talking about this? Why didn't this movie start off with Jedi doing real Jedi thing with the political theater firmly in the background? Who gives a f about this stuff? I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. But I will condone this hairdo I'm sporting, which surely cost gobs of government dollars, but whatever. I'm guessing in 2019, George Lucas will want to add some more lizards to this shot so that it will be complete. <laughs> this is basically Jurassic Avatar. Oh, moi, moi, I love you! Uh, so look, of course we're going to raise the sin total by 100 just because of Jar Jar Binks. But, as yeah! you know, Jar Jar is just a symptom of a far greater evil going on with these movies, blissfully unaware of what makes a positive impact. <laughs> Glad we could see the camera follow this chunk of sprites falling to the ground to add to our enjoyment. I think this movie's discount Dagobah scene was so cheap it might as well be from Spaceballs. Ow. Jedi can only go yep. underwater via the help of some they stole from Q at MI6. Is this a final meal, Rocky Day? Jar is no, the friendliest song of the character of the modern era. Mm. Yusa go into the bosses. Yusa in big doo doo this time. Yusa in big doo doo this time. You can see it, right? The green screen studio Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson are standing in? Yeah. Your yep. army is about to attack the Naboo. We must warn them. We shall no like the Naboo. Wait, I thought Naboo was the name of the planet. You and the Naboo form a symbiont circle. What happens to one of you will affect the other. You must understand this. It appears that the Gungans and the Naboo are completely separate from each other. These guys live in what is basically a secret underwater city and do fine without one another, so I don't get it. A speediest way to the Naboo tis going through the planet core. This place is basically Earth, right? The planet core isn't going to be ridiculously hot or anything? Okay. Also, the whole reason the clone army okay. came down to Naboo was to fight the people here, but they decided to land on the other side of the planet? F***ing why? Is it so we could see Star Wars turn into Finding Nemo before Finding Nemo existed? Ooh. He owes me what you call a life debt. Your gods demand that his life belongs to me now. I know this because I know everything about your culture I just learned existed five minutes ago. I mean, seriously, he just had this exchange with Obi-Wan. Master, what's a bongo? A transport, I hope. But now he's suddenly an expert on Gungan law. Get the f out of here. You know, some folks say Lucas got bogged down in his world creation with the prequels, and those people are onto something and not entirely wrong. This underwater craft built by an underwater civilization has no mechanism for detecting ginormous fish that might be swimming behind it within swallowing distance. 20,000 Jedi into the sea. A big thing that ate a smaller thing gets eaten by an even bigger thing, cliche. We're not even 20 minutes in, and these hologram meetings make you want to stab the movie screen with Twizzlers. I had the Senate bogged down in procedures. They will have no choice but to accept your control of the system. Why? You didn't tell him about the missing Jedi. No need to report that to him until we have something to report. And obviously the reigning Sith Lord can't sense Jedi activity on his own, so we're gravy, baby. Yeah. Where is it going? Don't worry. The Force Whoa. will us. The Force also guided you to yeah. nearly getting eaten by a gooberfish just a second ago. Why do we trust this Force anyway? Yeah. Obi-Wan fixes the ship by playing with a couple of wires. Seems legit. Relax. Qui-Gon waits 20 minutes into this movie to do this. Why are these invading ships attacking in a we straight line instead of a super line? We have captured the Queen. Yep. Ah, victory! Wait, they captured the Queen without a fight? That's not so much a victory as it is a forfeit. Jar Jar's sub containing two Jedi pops up to the surface of a downtown Naboo waterway and no one notices. This is actually yeah. fake Queen Amidala, played by Kira Knight, yeah. and this trailing yeah. servant is actually Natalie Portman, the real queen, which you only really notice on your second or third viewing. But my question is, what the f*** are you doing watching this a second or third time? I'm curious about many things in this shot. Most importantly, yeah. the reason why it looks fake as sh These birds yeah. are flying to join the birdemic. I'll let you debate which movie is better. Yeah. You could argue that it's a huge oh, coincidence yeah, the two Jedi show up in Naboo at the same time the Queen is being whisked away and stuff. at the same spot. But everything. someone's just gonna show up in the comments schooling you on Midichlorians, so why bother? You should leave the streets of Paris. So absolutely no one from the Federation except a bunch of droids were ensuring the Queen got to the right place? They need her to sign a treaty to make this invasion of theirs legal. They can't afford to kill her. What? They need her to sign a treaty to make the invasion of her home planet legal? Movie substitutes the previous robot action scenes in like we won't notice. There's the blockade! One ship is going to attempt to go through a planetary blockade with the Queen in tow. In other news, I just beat LeBron James one-on-one -on -one with one hand tied uh -huh. around my back, my left shoe tied to my right shoe, and playing with a football when I was on offense. Every droid but R2-D2 gets shot off the surface of the ship like bottles on Kid Rock's fence. 
R2, though, that f***er is indestructible, of course. And I'm not really? saying nothing about these droids' crazy ability to drive on the exterior surface of a moving spaceship. Yeah, I mean, man. If you can't get the shield generator fixed, we'll be sitting ducks. Aren't you already? You're right in front of the blockade, with a million ships staring you down. How are they missing you? Deflect the shields up at maximum. So this movie is saying if you have a shield generator, you can easily survive a blockade. Also, once you escape a planetary blockade, no one comes after you. I want that treaty signed. Why does it matter if the treaty gets signed or not? Aren't you evil? Do you care about laws? I mean, law also, a movie steals the treaty excitement from, um, that one exciting treaty-based movie. I want to know how holograms actually work. Is there a booth you step inside? From the Emperor's perspective, does he see these two guys sitting down as holograms on opposite sides of a table? If so, what at this table is broadcasting them? Also, what's up with this hologram technology? That Darth Maul could be standing a few feet behind his master and not be seen, but step forward and reveal himself. And I mean, extremely it's well shot. put together it is, droid but yeah. The Queen has time to recognize yes, droid it's... heroism. R2-D2, Your Highness. Yay, R2-D2! I remember that little guy. I completely forget that the first 28 really, minutes of this movie was about trade disputes. The hyperdrive generator's gone, Master. We'll need a new one. Yeah. That'll complicate things. And the screenwriter saw that it was good, and it was good. We're on a stealth mission, so let's bring the slow asteroid and the clumsy court jester Jar Jar. Brilliant! Oh! Go! Oh. Fine. Even if this movie is for kids, even if Jar Jar was made for kids, no matter what excuse you give me, this stepping in scene is basically a metaphor for the whole franchise. And one great kids movie that has a scene like this. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Don't touch anything. Dictionary is unsatisfactory in coming up with the right words of anger for this scene. Are you an angel? Uh, this began the least believable on screen moment since Anakin and Padme are the of the clones. Yeah. If you subscribe right. to the brand new and totally insane internet theory that Jar Jar was originally intended to be a Yoda-like evil Jedi master this whole time, how do you explain this Three's Company bull? Credits will do fine. No, they won't! What, you think you're some kind of Jedi waving your hand around like that? This didn't work against Jabba, and it didn't yeah. work against this pissant. So if the Force is only good against the weak-minded, what good is it? It should be able to take down some smarter creatures too, if it's worth a damn. Wouldn't have lasted long anyways if I wasn't so good at building things. Oh. Character backstory disguised as whining. Is that Greedo in the background? Why can't that motherfucker okay. be shooting his trigger-happy gun right now? Uh, body yeah. needs a body it's coming through the CGI. Chesco Sebulba. Chipoka Umen Gisa. Aren't you supposed to be cleaning the racks? How did you get out of your child labor obligations to go save Jar Jar? This storm will slow them down. Looks pretty bad. It does? I mean, I hear wind sound effects and the picture is a tiny bit blurry, but as a viewer, I've been given no indication of a super yeah. serious sudden sandstorm or severity. The horizon, we'll head back to our the, ship. Like the, is the it wall far? Of sand. Anakin is allowed to walk around with Qui-Gon everywhere he goes yeah. now because he saved the most annoying character in the movie from a fight. How these characters all end up together is hardly organic. Jar Jar does nothing except be oppressed, so they keep him. Anakin saves that asshole, so they keep him. Remember how Luke and Han became a team? It came out of need. These characters get to tag along because the script says so. Ah, yeah. I'll take you to my place. Because sandstorms are very, very dangerous, and this sandstorm happened to coincide with the time when the Jedi and company were humoring a little boy tour guide, the rest of all the Star Wars can happen. Isn't he great? He's not finished yet. So, Anakin built C-3PO. Yeah. All the yeah. of them being in the same yep. narrative by the time A New Hope rolls around are astronomical. <laughs> We have been introduced. The movie takes a character introduction that should feel epic and makes it feel... What's the opposite of epic? The death toll is catastrophic. As is this bill I just got for hologram communications. It is absolutely through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Jar Jar misses the apple, but he's definitely an asshole. I'm the only human who can do it. You must have Jedi reflexes if you race bots. Bot <sighs> racing? It's no different from NASCAR or Formula One. Yeah. The only human who can do it? Just another bullshit explanation for Qui-Gon to recruit this kid into the Jedi Academy. The prize money would more than pay for the parts they need. Basically, Star Wars turned into one of those 80s sitcoms where the characters need $10,000 yeah. and they find out there's a dance competition where they can win $10,000. He was meant to help you. Thank God Jar Jar got curious about some bullshit and accidentally started a fight with some asshole and Anakin was around to save him, even though I still don't think he cleaned those racks. <laughs> Hologram budget exceeds 50 million. What if this plan fails, Master? By the way, movie sticks Obi-Wan on this ship doing nothing the entire time on Tatooine. That's exactly what we wanted to see the badass character from the original trilogy do, now didn't we? There's something about this boy. Why can't they Jedi talk to each other? Why do they need these little radios? Who was his father? There was no father. 
Wow, way to Jesus Christ the Anakin character. You know what would have been way more interesting? Almost any mysterious character from the galaxy impregnating you and then leaving. You could have even made that a big surprise reveal in the third movie somehow. Anything but this. Oh, no, you okay, Annie. <laughs> Quiet, baby Greedo. You're lucky we even let you hold the paddle. This movie has officially come to a dead stop. What's happened so far? 28 minutes about taxes and another 15 minutes or so of the brown bunny when we watch Vincent Gallo wash his car in real time. 35 <laughs> second long conversation about midichlorians is 36 seconds too long. We need a midichlorian count. Hey, remember when you watched the original trilogy and you thought, man, if I could believe in the Force, I could be a Jedi. Well, it turns out Jedi creation depends on whether or not you have a lot of something really dumb called midichlorians in your bloodstream. How does an evil ship with a Sith Lord on it land on this planet without radar or Jedi intuition picking it up? As usual in these movies, only the bad guys have autonomous probes. I wager my new racing part against, say, the boy and his mother. Oh, I see. Qui-Gon yeah. either knows for a fact that Anakin will win the race, or he's literally risking everything on a hunch. Either way, sit. Qui-Gon practices yeah. the Jedi way and cheats at the dice throw. He should just use his Jedi powers to sabotage the race if he's going to subvert honesty anyway. <laughs> I can assure you they will never get me onto one of those dreadful starships. Wah, <laughs> 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 flying drones are able to wander this planet without anyone thinking it's weird or shady. The first Star Wars accomplished and established more in 20 minutes than this movie has in an hour. Sure, why not? Here's a hundred cents. Sebulba yeah. is Anakin's pod racer in front of thousands of spectators, yet no one sees a thing. Ah. Uh, oh, damn, this is stressing me out. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mason need to take a breather. Yeah. Be back in just a second, guys. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. The movie's getting worse the more they play stuff out. And you didn't think it could, did you? <sighs> I'm about to cry. Yep, it's bad. It's real bad. It's effing terrible. It's getting real. Uh, this had some pretty cool music come out of it. I mean, John Williams is one of the biggest saving graces of this of the yeah attempt at movies. Made by George Lucas. Mm -hmm. Clone Wars is a pretty legit series, so that's enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and Rebels is also really good. But it still. Yeah. Damn. Ugh. It's like there's actual neat stuff in here that they ruin. Yeah. Like, I think pod racing could actually be interesting. Just take out the cheese. Just take out the cheese. I, I mean, it's a and really, Jar Jar. Yeah, I mean, they made a pod racing game for the N sixty four to tie into this movie, and it wasn't awful. It was, it was better than this movie. Yeah, it was way better than this movie. Yeah, much and, better. Like, uh... <laughs>